Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? Please be seated. In a modern day contemporary parallel to our gospel reading, this church provides 50 provision of 50 beds for people in a recovery in the San Gabriel Valley at four different locations. And I like to think that when they touch their head on the pillow each night, they are in effect touching the hem of Jesus' garment. For we now are the body of Christ to the world. We are the incarnation of Christ and of righteousness to the world around us, and especially to the addicted who need healing. And so we're going to hear this morning from a couple of our people who touch their heads to the pillow each night at one of our two homes, one of our four, two of our four homes, I should say, and they're going to tell you their str strength and hope and share their experience with us. So I invite Richard to come up. Everybody, I'm Richard Bursch. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Richard. It's wonderful to be here today. Um, I want to thank the Church of Our Savior for asking me to speak. Um, I also want to thank the Jubilee Housing for providing a, a, a firm foundation for me. You know, um, you know, for a long time I've been uh, familiar with Alcoholics Anonymous and um, and off and on throughout the years, I've struggled in the program, uh, in and out of the program. And um, I've been in and out of Jubilee Homes for for a few years. You know, um, never really, never really using the tools that are provided for me. And um, I'm grateful that those tools are there, and they're giving me another opportunity to build on my spiritual growth. Um, I'm working with my sponsor and I'm, um, I just, I just find it nice that I can wake up every morning, get out, sit out on the porch and do my meditation and know that there's a place for me that um, I can do that. Because without, without the housing, I don't know where I'd be right now. Um, I can't imagine It'd be any place good, you know. So, with 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 that being said, um, I've been able to um, do the work I need to do, not just to get right with me and God, but to get right with mankind around me. Um, and twelve step processes is some of those tools I use to try to grow. Um, it's been real. I've I've heard this before. Is hearing again for the first time. You know, um, our dear friend who's in the hospital right now is um, fighting for his life right now, and I've just been praying for him. And it's just it's been nice to have a better understanding of my Creator today than I used to, and have faith that um, everything's gonna be okay regardless of what happens or what what goes down. Um, as long as I'm um, charging forward and growing, everything will be just fine. Um, thank, thank you, Bill, for asking me to speak. Thank you. Richard is referring to Bill Morgan, who's our Director of Recovery Services. Bill is indeed uh, in the hospital and struggling and, and needs our prayers. Thank you, Richard. 
Now I'd like to ask uh, Brittany to come up. Brittany is from our women's house. Um, good morning. I'm, uh, I'm Brittany McDonald and I'm an alcoholic. And thank you, Bill, for having me. I feel it's a pleasure and I'm enjoying myself. Um, I just I wanted to come in um, to put a few points out of things that the Jubilee Homes have done for me. The first thing, it has given me a sense of camaraderie. And when you have camaraderie, to me, that's a feeling of family and love and comfort and safety. Um, some of the things that we do, the, the functions, the, the Dodger games or things around here on the premises, we are invited to do those and we come and we get to meet people that are going to be continually in our life. And coming from where I've been, in, coming from where I've been, I felt like I need those types of people in my life to feel safe and to continue to have a better a life for myself. And before the Washington House, I was my soul, my spirit was very dim. I didn't know who I was or what I was doing. And the, at the moment that I was, in, I was accepted to be in the Washington House, my life has literally changed. And I cannot, um, I cannot give you as many examples or details of how everything has changed for me. When I got there, I had nothing, no one. I didn't know myself. I didn't know who my God was. Being in this house, I now have women that will be my friends for life, and Dixie Colas is a mother to me. And I've become closer to God in my own sense, and that's really good. That's a step forward to something more and that I can keep creating and adding to that in my spirituality. Also, some of the things that I really enjoy is um, I get to see other women come from where I'm at and have this foundation from the, the Jubilee Homes, and I get to see them grow. And it's one thing to see yourself grow, but to see other women that you love and you start learning to care about grow. And you see them praying to their higher powers or to their gods. And then after they start working on themselves, you see them working on others. They're reaching out to help others and not to take for themselves. And I think that's a miracle in itself. Um, this, the effects of this house, it's, it will do everything for me and for other women that are going to be coming before, during, and after me. And I'm just really happy to be a part of this because I felt like I have been given a life beyond my wildest dreams, and that's an understatement to how much I have gained and how much I love Jubilee Homes and Church of Our Savior. And I'm just really grateful to be here, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany and Richard. I also want to recognize uh, Dixie, who's Brittany's house manager, Dixie Colas, and uh, Fabian Gonzalez, who's here with uh, Richard, is Richard's house manager, and Raul Quijada, uh, housemate for Richard. And I also want to mention in passing that uh, three people who are integral to our church and to this service are graduates of Jubilee Homes. David is back there greeting people at the door. David is up here reading the lessons. And Ben is back there. Thanks, Ben. And uh, so uh, we've come full cycle from nothing, as Brittany and Richard uh, suggested, was their plight a few years ago, a few months ago. Uh, to, to something and to this church and to what it offers in the way of healing for people who are able to touch the life of Jesus through the, through the witness and outreach of this church. And I wanna uh, close with another parallel from the New Testament that uh, Jonathan Burke brought to my attention last Monday at morning prayer when the reading was from Acts 5. He said uh, about the disciples who were uh, imprisoned because of their preaching the gospel in the public places and uh, they weren't welcomed by their communities and so they were imprisoned. But uh, Acts 5 says, uh, but an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors during the night, brought them out and said, go take your place in the temple 
and speak to the people and tell them about this new life and all that it means. So you see the parallel to today is people who have been imprisoned in their addictions have had the doors of the prison open to them by angels or by the Lord or by the witness of this church and the outreach of this church. And they've come to the temple this morning, Church of Our Savior, and they've shared with us how their lives have been made new. So we're deeply grateful for the opportunity to minister in this place and out of this foundation of spirituality and faith and out of the generosity of the people of this parish. Thank you. Amen.